Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your hosts, RGX, RGX, Great Wrestle, Great Wrestle, and Frozzy, Frozzy, representing Honor Club, and you're listening to the HCW Podcast. Hello everyone, welcome back to the HCW show. My name is RGX, joined this week by Rate Tressel. How are you doing, buddy? Yeah, I'm doing well. Um, I've had some good news. The house is progressing quicker than expected, so I just need to get in a deposit soon, and then I'm moving to the sunny climate of Warsaw. Wonderful. Yeah, and how have you been? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, all go in the work front. Uh, big stuff coming there. Uh, not official yet. My colleagues haven't been informed yet, but that'll be coming very shortly. Uh, possibly by the time this video is actually uploaded. <laughs> uh, but yeah, lots of uh, news to talk about, and we'll be covering the Money in the Bank show. Uh, quick shout out to our brother in arms, Frozzy, who's out in assignment this week. Uh, we're hopeful to have him back for Thursday's show. Uh, but we do have the ever present DP ready and waiting on the sidelines, if not. Rampage Boy. That's what he's been known now forever. Mm-hmm. Rampage Boy. So, uh, get into the okay, big stories first of all. Uh, so, uh, Big E, who we all know has been recovering from a broken neck and is still trying to avoid surgery by letting it heal naturally with a mobilisation. Gave an update over Twitter last week uh, regarding his progress. Uh, he said in the tweet that uh, his C1 isn't ossifying. Uh, ossifying is basically calcification of bone, so reforming bone tissue uh, quite yet. The plan is to get more scans at the one year mark and see how it's progressing. Great news is he feels tremendous and surgery is off the table. It's great news. The surgery, but the key point there was scans at the one year mark. Uh, so I wouldn't expect them back before WrestleMania, I would say. Yeah, it might be longer though, no? Yeah. Uh, it would be nice if he was even there in a managerial capacity for Kofi and uh, Xavier. Even travel, I wouldn't want him flying with his neck in that fragile position. 100%, yeah. Well, hopefully, he, he, he gets better. Yeah. He's happy with his progress. He's in good spirits, so that's the main thing. Uh, so, hopefully, we, he continues to, to progress in his healing that he's got going just now. Another big story coming out this week is the uh, Io Shirai's WWE contract, which takes hiring soon. Uh, this is a, a Meltzer special uh, by a wrestling observer that our contract is due to expire next month. Uh, so I believe the date given was the 1st of August. Uh, and she's told people in Japan that when her contract's up, she's wanting to come back to Japan because of her family. So I will place a nice tasty bet with you just now that she's back in stardom by the end of August. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, she, it would be silly to go to AEW because it just wouldn't. She'd just be in the same boat at the moment that she is at the moment because she's never going to be brought up to the main roster for some reason, even though she's incredible. Um, but yeah, she will fit perfectly sounds, back into stardom. Sounds really bad. But the, uh, in WWE's mind, they've already got two Asian women on the main roster. Oh, exactly. I completely... Oscar came ahead instantly, but I forgot exactly. But yeah, it's, it is what it is, isn't it? Because her promo yeah. skills are not the greatest either, so it's kind of like, I can see what it is. But stardom well, should be perfect, especially what's going on at the moment. You see that, but uh, there was a thing, I think it was tail end of last year, where the NXT women, so this gives you an idea of when 
uh, we're all doing like a no makeup interview. Mm -hmm. uh, and our English was fairly good in that. Mm. So uh, I don't know if it's just that she's not being given the opportunity or she's going to use character work. But certainly I, I was very deliberate when I said Asian women as opposed to Japanese because obviously Jai Lee is not. But WWE, like their diversity, oh, one or two of each. And you know, we're saying they're bad, but you know they're just what they do. If I sure I went to the main roster, what they do is they somehow migrate them all together into a tag team because that's WWE. Look at the um, Kabuki Warriors and stuff like that. Corey Same was great, but instantly his old Oscars on the main roster will put her together. They've done it to two Scottish girls in the main roster, and I guarantee if Alba Fire comes up, oh, yeah. as much as I would love to see them as a trio, right. They'll be called something say. ridiculous as well, like the Bravehearts. It will be something stupid. <laughs> well, it will it'll be absolutely awful, but it'll be my three ICW girls. All... They're all great yeah. as well. Yeah. Nikki Storm, I nearly called it uh, Viper and uh, Kaylee. So, uh, let's see, Shirai will hopefully be able to have a match against uh, Kyrie Sane. Uh, even Drop off in TJPW a few times. Yeah, I'd like her not to just be stuck in just the stardom, yeah, like TJP, like wrestling DDT as well, because they have a few women on there. And come over for UK shows? Yeah. Yes. Probably not. <laughs> so, speaking of UK shows, uh, you may have remembered from, I believe it was April, was when it was originally scheduled. The, the former Authors of Pain, uh, now known as the Legion of Pain, uh, are attempting to run their own show uh, based in the Motor Point Arena in Nottingham, which for the record is a six to 7,000 seater venue. It was originally, supposedly, supposed to be in uh, Dubai, uh, but the King of Dubai had taken ill uh, so that was rearranged. And then they decided to run it at the Motor Point Arena in Nottingham during Diamond Jubilee weekend. So when it didn't sell well, which I was never going to the card they had, they blamed it on the Jubilee and rescheduled it to this weekend. Now, uh, for those of you with a keen eye and who have been following it, it seems kind of dodgy throughout. There are now superstars who were fo uh, featured on the poster and on the match cards that were advertised and on their personal Twitter that they are not categorically not going to be at the show. Uh, one of those being the former Nia Jax, now going by her real name, Lena Panini. Uh, and this poster was tweeted out just a day or so ago so they've known about this for a while. Uh, she tweeted out yesterday, I do not know why I'm still on this poster, but I will repeat myself again. I will not be at the show. Do not buy a ticket thinking I will be there or you will get to see me perform or get a chance to meet. I hate that this mis misleads people. It's a tweet of a, a poster for a meet and greet giveaway with uh, Nia Jax, Moose, Big Demo, uh, and Persia, uh, former Persia Perotta, who now goes by Steph Delander, uh, and a few others. Uh, many have come out and said that they're not available or they're not going to be there. Uh, the former Aidan English, who now uses his real name Matthew Rywald, uh, has come out and put the, the company on blast, essentially. Uh, he had been promised initially, when this was uh, originally booked, that he would be guaranteed to be used. Uh, so it cancelled all his other bookings for that weekend and was meant to have been paid a deposit 
I took them at the word that they would pay him at the show. I, I basically cost him his time and income. Uh, so this is his, uh, his tweet, or series of tweets. I'll condense it down into one. So, at WES Official TV has cost me time and now cost me income. I was asked to be on this show but had a conflicting booking. I was told they really wanted me and would pay me up front. As they were former colleagues, they took them at their word and passed on the other booking. I have since been completely ghosted with zero communication. I have friends booked for this show and luckily some of them have been paid already but I doubt the show will happen. No travel, hotel or any pertinent information has been shared with anyone I know. Now, I'm also out a weekend of income due to them. Part of that is on me, uh, being Aiden English, as I chose to forgo over, uh, the other date. But as I said, I was repeatedly told that for sure this was happening and they wanted me there. Now, is that not a major red flag that a week out from the show, they've not got travel and accommodation and stuff booked for the the wrestlers appearing on it. Yeah, this sounds like... Do you remember Five Star? This yeah. sounds like the absolute mess of Five Star, which there will be a show, and they'll pay too much for the odd person that's on there, and it will just go to absolute crap. Do you even think there'll be a show? I think there'll be a show, but I think it will be very, very depleted to what has been advertised. And then there'll be proper, like, UK... Indie guys that are not even like your main guys, like Robbie X and people like that, like you just random local talent to that area. This is a, as I said at the start, a six to seven thousand seater venue. Uh, I think your O2 arenas, your uh, Cow Palace, mm. uh, that kind of size of venue. Uh, and they'll be lucky if they even get a hundred tickets, even when. That the original card they put out is not strong enough to even sell a thousand tickets. Never mind. Wasn't the tickets extortionate as well? Yeah, uh, their meet and greet tickets were nearly two hundred pounds. Uh, their floor seats were uh, fifty, and their nosebleeds were uh, thirty and forty. I guarantee yeah, well... anyone that bought a nosebleed will be brought down to the floor level. Probably in the ring. That's how many people um, I, will be there. Be trained, uh, be able. <laughs> yeah, like um, this is a segue. By the way, um, Fight Club Pro. Um, they haven't been around for a while, and OTT o- Over the Top Wrestling from Ireland. Mm. They're booking a show in Wolverhampton, and me and my mate run about the tickets recently, and like their tickets are like thirty, forty quid, and it's an indie show, and it's like, come on. UK indies are going up. Even ICW are getting close to twenty twenty five now. Like Kamikaze Pro, decent, like very good show, 15 quid for a ticket, or 25 if you want to meet someone, 25 quid the maximum, and then you got OTT, I think the cheapest is 35 just to be there. ICW used to be like between 10 and 20 pounds, depending on the venue. Are uh, your cheapest tickets are like 25, 30? Yeah, it's insane. Like, I went OCW when it was in Birmingham, and it was, I think it was 20, but that's because of the travelling, and I got to see people like Drew McIntyre, you know. So, you know, so. And, and that was them on the upturn as well. Yeah. Uh, but, Same with yeah, progress. Ever, ever since they, uh, they partnered with WWE and their, their shows go on the network, if, if the show is supposed to be on the network, and they, tra- they charge a premium for it, still only like £10 to go to a fight. Uh, Fight night, uh, or fight club taping, uh, but you're twenty five to thirty five for a a main show, like yeah. your Shug's house parties. Um, yeah, it's, they're out pricing people because, like, I see, be fair enough. Like the the talent on there, but you like people are not going to pay thirty quid to see. Like, I really like people like Jack Jester. I don't know if he's still at ICW. Mm-hmm. And people like that, but like. He's on the network, but that doesn't mean I want to pay an extra 20 quid more than I was normally paying to see him. Don't get me wrong. ICW has a die-hard fan base that will go to every single show. Uh, we used to call it ICW Sundays. Uh, me and my wrestling buddies from up here. 
and we would go to the it was the garage in Glasgow back mm. in uh, every month. Uh, you would have Shrubs House Party, which is like uh, the WrestleMania weekend one. You would have Square Go, which is the ICW version of the the Rumble. Uh, Royal yeah. Rumble. Uh, Beer and Woven, which is their WrestleMania that ran at the Hydro, which is a six and a half thousand seater venue, uh, largest show ever put on by a uh, European independent. Wasn't. But there were surprises, weren't there, as well? Like yeah. you'd just see Mick Foley turn up or Triple H and that, um, and Kevin you know, Nash, on, yeah. Whereas now you're not expecting any of that and you're paying more than you were going to be. You get Pete Dunne throwing back up occasionally. Yeah. Like, or you went to a progress show and like it was I think it was about twenty five quid, but Finn Balor randomly turned up. He played musical chairs, but he turned up. You know, <laughs> so, yeah. uh, where were Chris Segway there? That was Segway, uh, wasn't it? Rants. <laughs> so before we cover uh, Money in the Bank, there is a, a story regarding that. So prior to the show, a meeting was held with uh, talent backstage. Uh, and that was held by Stephanie McMahon, Triple H, and Nick Khan. Basically, it was just your kind of standard talent meeting, letting them know they're now in charge. Stephanie's door is always open. Uh, and that uh, Triple H is back full time uh, with the company. And what capacity is not public yet. But it's good that he's kind of back hands on with the talent again, even if it's not running NXT the show. Yeah. And according to the uh, Fightful sources and the talent they reached out to, it was a very positive meeting. And one thing I wasn't aware of until this came out is Stephanie's apparently downright adored backstage. Uh which is a far cry from the early to mid two thousands. <laughs> And she was charged with SmackDown creative and uh, were constantly worried about the place on the card and stuff. Yeah, I think with that though, it was because she was the boss. It, like, she is the boss's daughter. Like, I don't know why I said that, like, it would change. <laughs> um, but it was, she was so young, wasn't she? And she, like, um, people like Jim Cornette and people have gone on about it that she was just thrown in the job. She's like a 19 year old, 20 year old girl, and she's been thrown this major power job. But now she's been around so long, I can understand while well, she's a bit more respected and she knows more what she's doing. Yeah, as I say, it's the line that he said that she was downright adored. Uh, quite nice to hear. You don't hear that often about how I in the relationship with higher ups in the company. So it's good that they've got someone that they kind of trust and like. I'm happy for the talent in that regard. Yeah, it's nice as well because all you see of Stephanie is the like make a wish and the you know like the stuff that you'd think they're just pushing that to make her look like that. But it's nice to see that actually she is like that. You know, yeah. Um, she invented which, the women's revolution, or don't you remember? She did, and you know, and it's slowly dying. <laughs> So Vince McMahon apparently wasn't at the meeting, but he was, of course, at the taping uh, and went with them to the UFC show that took place down the road later that night, along with that guy, is it Israel something his name is? Came out like full Undertaker music, earn the lot. Not a clue. Apparently Undertaker was in the audience and appreciated it anyway. But... Yeah, uh, that covers all the news. So if you'd like to regale us with your review of Money in the Bank. Yeah, we'll get straight into it. So I'm going to mention straight off to yourself in general. I didn't write anything about backside segments. I kind of just whizzed past them. So if there's anything important during this, just mention it because I just didn't we, care. We will talk about the the teaser promo. Oh yeah, no, that's fair enough. Um, I don't know what I can't remember. I haven't noted that down either, but I don't know when that was. So just stop me when we get to that point. Memory re- uh, recalls, I believe it was between the tag match, uh, 
Yeah, it was after the tag match. The Usos match, yeah, yeah. So we'll stop there. I think it's going to be Ric Flair's return, but we'll speak about that when we go to that point. Um, so yeah, this Money in the Bank, I was a WWE recently have been doing very good pay per views. There's not many matches that are real letdowns, which is good to see. So I think they are picking up their um, their bit of the show. It's not like you'd have like one good match and then four average matches. It's cheaper to keep three hours, which has been a godsend. Oh, it's great, isn't it? Four and five hours. Especially as a UK fan who doesn't stay up, I get to watch it when after when I wake up, and I get to skip the intros, and it's like two hours long. Um, so it's glorious. But yeah, this started off with the women's money in the bank. Um, I haven't read who was in this, so um, it was Bliss, Morgan, Shotzi, Raquel, Lacey, Lynch. That's yeah, Asuka. Asuka, is that it? I don't want to miss someone. I feel like that's it. Liv, Bliss, Asuka, Becky, Roxy, uh, Raquel. Raquel. Was it seven or six? Because I've got six. Lacey, seven. There we go. Um, so, yeah, I've started deciding that I'm not going to go full into notes with stuff. So, I've just picked out the main spots. Um, so... With the many women's money back, I really enjoyed it, but there was a lot of botches at the early get go of it, and I think it kind of built into it. Um, yeah. So Raquel did like a lifting spot where she didn't realise that because she, she's standing on the middle of the ladder that she couldn't get it past her groin. Um, In fairness to her as well, I think that Liv was out of position on her side uh, because it wasn't evenly distributed. Yeah, so, so it was always going to falter. So Web needed to be like a runner to further along for the weight to be more even. Yeah. But um, as we were kicking off from that, like uh, Shotzi, uh, do you know when Shotzi did the run up the ladder, did you, did you sense as soon as that was going to happen, that was not going to happen? As soon as I saw it, it was like, she's going to not hit this. I want to say for the record just now that I wouldn't worry any kind of fashion of uh, Shotzi and stuff for, for this. I've heard awful things about like people on her Twitter and stuff saying that she should be should be fired and is not ready for TV and all that kind of stuff. That's incredible. That that kind of message people is have, incredible. But people have bad nights. Uh, don't hold it against her. Nobody was hurt. To be fair. She, I would say, Shotzi was the MVP of this match. Like they really put her over, like with all the offense she tried, and stuff. She, she tried, uh, and just real bad luck on the night, I think. Yeah, like she tripped up the ladder, which is fair enough because I've seen so many people do that. Cause you're running up just a ladder with massive holes into. There's a chance you're gonna f that up. Yeah, and I think uh, that's um, where she's. After that, she could have got in her head a bit. Yeah. Like the trouble with this match is they were trying to be too in and out. Like it's in a, I can't even say the word. Innovative, innovative. Oh, I can't say it. Innovative. That's the one. I'm glad you're here. Um, <laughs> they were trying to do too much that hasn't been done before. Like the spot where Becky Lynch was. Um, like there was four people lying on the ladder and she did the leg drop stuff like that. Um, I feel like they were. It, it was just they needed to stay to the basics with it. Yeah, um, I think their, their time must have been cut as well, because this was mm. so rushed. Was... Yeah. But yeah, if you want to continue, sorry, mate. No worries, yeah, and people like, what well, they're always surprised by as well, but they were booing Lacey. Like, I don't understand. Like, you had the promos on the previous Smackdowns, etc., for the last months. They were used too much, but I don't understand why they've turned to booing her instantly. Because she, they booked her as a heel for like two weeks randomly before putting her in a handicap match against Sonya and that much is her only face appearance. Ah, okay, so it's the way uh, that she's been booked. Yeah. It's crowd apathy because even the crowd don't know. So they're just like, if you. So she's going full big show. We don't know if you're heel, we don't know if you're heel. Um, I honestly thought at one point she did win the match because she was by herself um, and she could have grabbed the case. Um, the ladder was absolutely fecked at this point. Like the ladder <laughs> trying to climb that. I don't know what happened to it, but it was absolutely meshed. Uh, it was uh, see during the the uh, 
botched electric chair drop. Mm. When she kind of fell back into it, that's when the support stance uh, kind of crumpled a little bit. Because the, the ladder kind of went in at an angle and yeah. went down towards itself, so that's when that stanchion broke in the middle. So I'm glad they got a replacement ladder. Yeah, because it was faltering for most of the match at that point, the ladder. Um, Shotzi did like a sent on bump, which was grim because she whacked. Oh, I didn't realize until they showed the yeah, retake. They her head. she and she was busted, wasn't she? Like, there was you could tell what her face was red, like, and everything like that. Um, obviously, they had to get the bridge spot in where there has to be a ladder against the apron or against the announce table or against the guardrail, depending on what you're doing. I'm surprised Asta wasn't injured off the back of that because mm. uh, our. He's got long-standing issues with her wrist, and it was heavily taped. And the way that Becky kind of slid off her, like, trapped her hand and wrist between Becky and the ladder. Like, it's like every single spot apart from the main one at the end, which we'll cover in a minute, none of them went to plan, really. Yeah, there was a lot of. Um, I think it's one of these ones that it went. I was just enjoying the match of lot. There was a lot of botches, but it was also it was just intense. Mm. The amount of botches. Um, like you had the bridge, which that ended up being terrible as well, <laughs> and that ended up. You had um, Becky did the big time leg drop on the bridge, where she literally bounced off it. That's what it felt like from that. Um, I haven't written much of notes from here at the moment, um, so if there's anything you want to bring up before I mention who the wins? Uh, yeah. There is... Uh, well, when you're talking about the uh, who wins, are you talking about the spot? Are you going to be covering that, or do you want me to talk about no, that? Oh, yeah, you can continue that, because I didn't write that spot at all. <laughs> so... Uh, Becky, who of course has been the one with the story behind her trying to get off this horrible downward spiral that she's on, is at the top of the ladder, ready to grab it. Uh, and Liv is climbing uh, a ladder on the opposite side, facing away from hard cam. Uh, but uh, it was a quite ingenious spot, and given how the night had gone so far, I had fears for this when I saw what she was attempting to do, but I actually pulled off quite well. Uh, Becky, who was on the main ladder underneath the briefcase, tipped Liv's ladder over to send her climbing. Yeah. But Liv was able to push off the rope and bring the ladder back up again, knock uh, Becky down and grab the case. Only issue I had with the spot is that uh, Liv was on the wrong side of the ladder. She, she was facing away from hard cam. Yeah. So she had to try and awkwardly position herself for the briefcase grab. It's, if you've ever noticed a ladder match, you don't win the match facing away from hard cam. But Liv did it. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> she turned herself around on the ladder before she unhooked. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Liv picked up the win as we've uh, got onto that point as well, which was a nice victory. I picked Becky Lynch to win it because I just expected it. They were building up so much. Same, but this was the what I call the big E pick. Like someone who is Feel really moment, loved yeah. backstage. Nobody's got a bad word to say for her. And fair play her, she has worked her arse off. Like, yeah, the improvement is insane in Liv Morgan. Like, she wasn't bad. Look, I'm not yeah. she was she was just average green, I'd say green. Um but yeah, the the improvement is insane that she's done in like probably last year. Like I was looking at my ratings, um she had like two matches of rated like above three stars since I've seen her, but like this year there's like five already. So yeah, it's kinda of like the improvement is there. Um but yeah, so Liv picked up the win. Um, I really enjoyed this match more than most people. Like, I think it was just because there were so many botches, and I think just because of the brutalness of like the shotsy bump and stuff like that. I had it three and a half. I really enjoyed it. If I could boil it down into one phrase, bless them, they cried. 
a lot of the uh, right spots were good ideas. They were. They were just good plan, bad execution. Yeah. Um, but we'll speak about Liv a bit more later on. Spoilers. Um, so um, this was followed by Fury versus Lashley, which I'm going to say now because me and my mate were speaking about the predictions. I was trying to figure out how Fury could win this match. And I was going, there's no way he could pin Lashley and stuff like that. But it's Fury, and then I should have put my... I should have been I, confident I, when Lashley's going to win this. I put no contest. Yeah, I was going with my... It could be a DQ, so something like that. So I should have just went Lashley. It's annoyed me ever since. I would have never won the FPL match, but because I was still like five points Don't behind. Be wrong, um, I, I didn't top lock a multi-person match. It was yeah. just on the card. That's odd. Um, like the weird thing as well is, I w- this was my lowest confidence point because I was sure Lashley might win somehow. So I rated this a what like a one star, um, one confidence point. Then next, the ladder matches were two and three. So yeah, if you've gone balls deep at six, you know, yeah, that's uh, confidence that is. Um, but yeah, so we had Theory versus Lashley, um, Mister Man's boy. So for the start of this match, Lashley was full on Lashley smash. Um, absolutely battering Fury. Fury ended up in the fetal position, which I think was a fun spot. He was genuinely like, "No more, please." It was like it was like old school Ric Flair when Ric Flair's going, "No, no, please." Um, and then Fury got in control and started wearing down Lashley. Um, it was nice. I writ here, which is a weird thing. It's nice to see Lashley not facing Omos. That was what I wrote here. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, an absolutely beautiful spear from <laughs> from, yeah. uh, from theory. Mm. Uh, even did the little flip thing that Bobby does. Yeah, look, it was very lucky. This match was a decent matchup. Um, I think Lashley's a good wrestler, but I think Omos ruined him slightly for me because it was just, every Omos match wasn't a great match, so I just completely forgot about Lashley being decent. Yeah, it's taking the shine off him a bit. Yeah, um, so there was a Gorilla Press Slam, which is always impressive. Um, so Lashley did, so Fury is going for the A-Town down, and Lashley tried to do the cradle again, but this time it was a near fall. And then out of nowhere, he locks in the Hurt Lock, and he picks up the win. And Fury tapped out instantly. It was like, nope, not one in this. Um, keep myself fresh for later. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Spoilers, um, but yeah, I rate this three stars. It was a good matchup, I, I, especially with them. Like, it's well known by now, and spoilers, he's going to be on the thumbnail. Uh, it's well known at this point he is added to the the main later, so it was actually quite foreshadowing, and we should have seen it coming earlier when he tapped that quick. Yeah. So at least they kind of played the story, so it wasn't like he was in. Yeah, it it, it works. Um, so yeah, I rate that three stars. I enjoyed the matchup. Um, this was followed by Bang- Bianca versus Carmella, which we all knew how this was going to go. Um, it must be annoying. What I wrote here, it must be annoying for Bianca to have that braid. She's mm. doing flips, and she has to grab the blade, uh, the braid, to make sure she didn't tangle herself up. Yeah, what I'll quickly mention here is just before the women's match, uh, Liv is interviewed backstage. Mm. Uh, she's asked the, the same stupid question that every interviewer asks somebody in the bank winner, which champion are you going to go after? She rightly says, don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> and that she's going to go and celebrate. No cash in tonight, honest. But yeah, yeah. and then we go into the the women's match for the Raw women's title. Yeah, so uh, she did well to uh, hoax us all. Um, but yeah, so I said with this, like, Bianca, her braid must be annoying to wrestle with. Like, it's obviously the weapon thing and it's unique, but it's like every time she does any kind of aerial offense, she has to hold her braid to make sure she doesn't trip over it or get tangled in it. Yeah. Um, she was absolutely mauling Carmella for most of this match. Um... No, it was a great rap submission from that point. Um, Kamala was getting desperate, so she was trying to pin her instantly and so forth like that. She was trying to do super kicks, trying to get the near falls, which you can pick up. And then just out of nowhere, um, Bianca hit the KOD to pick up the win, 
Uh, he rated that two and three quarters, so it's just above average, but it was just a match, really. Imperial are predictable. Yeah. Uh, this was one of my this was my top block. Uh, I think this was my top block. It was all it was all over the two women's matches. Both of them were the top of the scale, but um. Um, and then obviously Carmella blasted Bianca afterwards, so we're going to see a rematch, which I'm looking forward to, getting another top yeah. lock. Uh, <laughs> yep, the heel beats down the champion winner uh, after the match. Of course, there's no cash in favour, because she's away celebrating. Honest. She is, she's yep. away celebrating. Uh, but I hate when the face just kind of gets up after a heel beat down. The heel's not running away, or anything, they're just back up the ramp. Hey, sir. If you're that annoyed about it, go after her. Don't but just wrestling. stand there and go. Ugh. Because it was Banky, but Banky, uh, Bianca Blair, I'm surprised she didn't just start waving a braid and skipping. Yeah. Because that's yeah. her angry face. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it was it was above average. It was fine. And then we're moving on to the Usos versus the Prophets, which was my match of the night, which was insane. Yeah. So uh, before that kicks off. Uh, we get a backstage Alexa Bliss segment. Now, this obviously isn't filmed live, so the crowd seem to immediately know that they're being sold to here. <laughs> uh, and it's uh, her and Lily backstage for the Capital One or... Yeah, the Ch- card, the, yeah. I the boot, name. Yeah. Credit One, I think it is now, but it's Capital One. Uh, basically for a credit card. Uh, Lily has bought her boots, which are obviously doll size, not human size. And uh, Bliss admonishes her saying, check her size next time. And the crowd boos relentlessly at this. Yeah, because it was just advertisement, but it was proper, like, this is happening. It wasn't, like, mu- like brief. No, they normally mute the crowd mics for these. I don't know why they left it on. Because they just don't like Capital One themselves, and it's like, we've got money, but if we show that no one likes them. Um, but yeah, so the Usos versus the Prophets, uh, this was my match of the night. It was incredible. Um, very good matchup. Um, even though I've seen the Usos versus the Prophets many a time, they were given time, and it was just a very good matchup. Um, so, like, the Street Prophets were trying to get the desperation at the start. They were going for quick finishes, trying to pick up the win. Um, I writ here, Ford is turning. Instantly, on Ford is turning heel or something like that. Well, the speculation is, and we'll cover it more on uh, Thursday when we talk about Raw, but you'll notice, uh, have you watched Raw to do your ratings yet? I have not, but like you can spoil that side of it because I won't really... Pay attention to the commentary. No, you don't. You will... Pick up the bent sisms. That'll Excellent. give you an indication of what's going to happen. Uh, but, yeah, uh, they're very much looking at that, I think. So I don't know if it would be him turning heel, but I, I do see Montez being pushed as a single star. Well, there's speculation, isn't there, that they are going to push Montez Ford, which I feel bad for Andrew Dawkins because he was stuck in NXT so long and then Ford was the meal ticket. Yeah, but um, Ford's practically doubled in muscle in the last six months. Yeah, and he had. I think that was ever since that Reigns match where everyone paid attention. I think he's built up because of people paying attention to him. Yeah. Um, so there's a Uso spot where they suplexed, um, I think it was Ford into the post, which you don't see that many times. I don't think I've ever seen that. But f- Well, I, I'm in the same boat as Pat McAfee. My eyes have never seen that. Have your eyes ever but Cole's seen, seen it? Cole's seen it many a time, yeah. Cole's seen it a few times. Absolutely my eyes have never seen it. Yeah. Uh, the Usos were beating down Dawkins at that point. Um, Jimmy hit a drive-by because, you know, the tribal chief. Um, Ford did a fire up. Um, there was an apron suplex from then. Dawkins got a hot tag in and got a few moves in. And they hit a blockbuster doomsday with the voice for a near fall. Um, double super kick from the Usos for a near fall. Uh, Montez did the Montez special, which is the dive over the uh, the rope, which is fine in this kind of match as long as he doesn't do it all the time. Mm-hmm. 
They hit a he hit splash for a near fall at that point, and then the Usos picked up the win with the 1D. And I rate that four and a quarter stars. I very much enjoyed that matchup. I would have enjoyed this more if I hadn't seen them wrestle 50 times previously. Yeah, but this was the 51st. The important one. It, it was a really good match, though I'm not sure about the the one to head forward having his shoulder off the mat for the pin. Is one nobody ever kicked out or had a shoulder up for the three D, which is yeah. what the one the one D is the one and done. Uh, so somewhere, somebody raise like human somewhere. Uh, and he'll be whining about it and busted open radio if he hasn't already. Uh, and. It obviously leaves the door open for yet another match between them, which won't be at the same time. It'll be seven minutes on Raw, probably. Or in the Smackdown, uh, Smackdown, on the SummerSlam, either first or second on the card. So they're not going to get the time to steal the show in that card that they did tonight. Yeah, because oh, this will just be more of it will lead to the turn, though, won't it? Well, the Dawkins turns on Ford or Ford or so, and turns it. I think it'll be Dawkins that turns on Ford, thinking about it. Yeah, uh, as I say, pay attention to the commentary when you watch Raw. Um, but yeah, that was four and a quarter stars, a very good match, match of the night. Um, and then we're going to discuss the um, vignette, um, which I've not noted down, but I know everything that happened, is it? So we see a kind of spippy red filtered uh, video uh, with various uh, little teasers and nods in there. You see the the Hardy's armband, the Dudley glasses, uh, Eddie Guerrero's license plate, a uh, gold medal. Uh, full disclosure, I was fast forwarding between matches in order to get. Yeah, the yeah I was. Yeah, and I'd seen like the gold medal come up. I went, oh, I, I must be missing something. and went back, so I watched it. Uh, and I was like, oh god, Gable Stevenson. I, I That's what I thought first, yeah. Until, um... All I'd seen was a gold medal. I was like, well, Kurt's recovering from knee surgery, so it's no him. Uh, I am fairly certain it's going to be Edge. Well, it's got to be, isn't it? He's linked to everyone in that promo. So unless they're doing a proper spoof, which they're not, it's not going to make sense. Don't be wrong. I, obviously, he would have faced. Eddie Guerrero a few times on SmackDown, but I don't remember any pay-per-view matches. Yeah, I can't remember a big match with them, but obviously with the Dudley's glasses, that's the TLC. Hardy's Kurt Angle was a breakout uh, match for him. The Hardys... There probably uh, is a big match Hulk with Eddie, Hogan's yeah. Hulk was in there as well. Yeah, which he tagged with Hulk Hogan, which was a major thing in his career, yeah. So I think it's fairly clear that it's Edge. I don't know who else it could be. Uh, but I'll be very sad if he, as much as I love uh, Metal Ingus, I'll be very sad to see the other side go if that gets left to, to the Judgment Day. Yeah. But yeah, uh, that was that segment, so then we roll into the main. Um. So we, before the main, we had Ronda versus Natalia. Uh, remember that I mean. match. And then something that. happened after that, so there's a lot before we get to that. Um... So, Ronda versus Natalia, the other top lock. Um, so, yeah, they started very technical. This was actually very a technical match. Um, yeah, Natalia, Rousey. Yeah, um, which was expected. Natalia was doing a few big downs. Rousey got Natalia in a sharp, sharp shoot, which was pretty nice to see. It was very methodical and slow, I'll be honest with this. Um, there was I a sharp like shooter... Yeah, it was good. Um, there was a sharp shooter on, sharp shooter on the apron, um, which you don't really see that often. Part of um, part. Yeah, especially when a sharp shooter's on it, you know, <laughs> you can't lean on that uh, that metal girder. Um, and then it ended up with Rousey picking up the win with the armbar. I rated this two and three quarters as well. It was decent, but like it was just above average for me. I could have put that a bit higher than that. Uh, I just, it was it, it, the most awkward was when Rousey grabbed the wrong ankle for the ankle lock. Yeah. Uh, seeing someone's right ankle in an ankle lock looks weird to me. Yeah. 
I think it's just because it's it was rehearsed and it was also a knew who was going to win. Like, there was no hiding she was not going to win. I know, but we knew the wrestlers were going to win. Yeah, but down since day one. Apologies, oh, listeners, if you hear the dog barking. I... Sorry, it settled anyway. But yeah, um, so yeah, Rousey picked up to win. She walked down the entr- uh, the the entrance, and nothing bad happened to her. So we'll move on to the main. No, um, so obviously <laughs> um, Rousey was beaten down. So we hear Liv Morgan's music. I honestly thought she was going to run down and something bad was going to happen, but no, she cashed in. And I like the start of this, that she went to kick Rousey and Rousey turned into an ankle lock. Because I genuinely thought she was going to beat her. I thought that was going to be, oh my God. Which shows it was a a good spot to do. Yeah. Like, she had her in it for a while and then she rolled out of it and then she she rolled her up for the pin. I rate that quarter star because it is what it is. (laughs) More for the moment, I'm I'm happy for her, and I, it was a nice touch from Rousey to put her over like that as well. I like that, that as well, stuff. yeah. Because Rousey think... doesn't show respect, yeah, uh, to and many I've... people. Yeah, it was enjoyable because people in the comment in the FPL server, I think, was like they don't understand why she did show Rousey respect. It's because Rousey understands that that's a briefcase and she cashed in at the right time. Oh, like, she's uh, was bitter one of the... about it. When it's a face cashing in, yeah, face on the face, uh, uh, yeah. the face getting cashed in on would go. Can't blame me. I would have done the same. Fair enough. Well done. Yeah, and she did, and that's good because it would just have been the typical thing. Oh no, lives one. Rousey beats her down because she's casting. I like this change of um, tone for it. And as I say, the moment was really nice because she is one of those. It's universally liked. Backstage, she, nobody's got a bad word to say about her. She's like the big E of the women's locker room, and that, yeah, that fashion. Um, so very happy for her. And wish she has a decent run, but there's a flare around the corner. Woo! Ric Flair is going to cash in. Uh- <laughs> the second last match. <laughs> Ricky Flair, no, Rakesha Flair. There we go. That'll be one. <laughs> uh- I don't even... Um, so the main event was the men's money in the bank. So everyone was in the ring, and then there's a wild um, Adam Pearce. I honestly thought he was going to be the match at one point. I genuinely... I wanted to see Scrap Daddy in a match. Yeah. Um, so he was announcing there's going to be another participant, and it's A-Town Down Fury that comes mauling down. Um, so the start of the match was pretty much where, as we expected, everyone's going to try and stop Omos. Um, Omos, this is the best Omos match I've seen, but because it's 90% not Omos. Um, Fair play on um, the, the, the takes. Yeah. Uh, it's the most we've seen on Bump. Yeah, because he needs to, doesn't he? Otherwise, he's just going to be there, and it's like, oh, Omos must win this match. What's um, the way yeah. you've seen him like, getting knocked off the ladder from like three steps up and him sell it? <laughs> sell in his it. face as well, yeah. It was like... <sighs> It doesn't sell like many things at all normally, but of all the things to sell, that's what he sells. He might as well have done the Peter Griffin sell. After he did. Popping off the the third rung of the ladder and like rushing against the ropes. He's a big man though. So, you know, know, the bigger they are, the uh, harder they're falling and all that crap. Um. Omos was dominant for the start, like um, until he got claymored, and then um, he was still dominant after that. Theory was sneaky. They kept mentioning Theory was sneaky. Uh, Zayn was even sneakier. That's why I really heard. <laughs> hiding behind the flipping ape, the uh, ring post. <laughs> what you liked about that? Um, I read here at this point, poor Omos. There was just absolute wailing on him. Uh, you're apparently a bit where they just start burying him with ladders. Yeah. Just he was getting wild upon. Um, and then they had the good old spot, let's let's all hug so someone can do a dive. Um, which was just, as usual, I just don't like dive spots. Uh, mad cough, madcap lifting Omos, that noise was stupid. Do you know, when you lift him over the rope and it was like... <laughs> what, what's happened? I think it's the crowd started booing madcap after that. Yeah, it's because it was just like... 
he added too much emphasis. It was not like, ah, it was like, ah! Ah! Um, and then he, they put Omos for a table, um, which was like, character. it was like, like a fucking shield. Yeah. Yeah. It was nice, and that was some bumpy took as well. He went slider off the table and back to back easy. Yeah. Um, and then we saw our boy Butch. Um, he tried to stop McIntyre winning the title. Um, we obviously had to have a super RKO because Riddle is Randy Orton. Um, and they all ended up with Fury actually being alone, and he picked up the win. Um, on, the, on the right side of the ladder. Yep, so that's why I rated it quarter of a star more than the women's match. I rated three and three quarters, because I picked that out. That's... <laughs> But yeah, good match. Just money in the bank. They're mostly good. Yeah, obviously, I'll be careful. Uh, Theory has his detractors for reasons I'm sure people can look into for themselves. Uh, I have looked into his past stuff myself. I couldn't find much weight to it. Yeah, there's nothing concrete, yeah. But there are, are some who think WWE is now the most disgusting company in the world for for giving him the briefcase. Uh, I'll leave it at that. I'll just say that it's, that's not my opinion. I agree, yeah. There's nothing like... It was that situation of the whole movement, but like nothing concrete came out. I believed every tweet I read about wrestlers, I would find something else to watch. Oh yeah, this would be in the bin. <laughs> just every year, just be in the bin, and we wouldn't have an award-winning podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that award being my mother's favorite podcast. Well, second yeah. favorite because she prefers our ADHD one. But <laughs> outrageous. I'm only kidding, Mum. I know we're your favourite. Hi. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, that just about covers everything. So I'll do our usual housekeeping here. The links to all our socials are in the description below. That includes our Twitter. The show Twitter being at honour underscore club. That is honour with a U because we are British. The link to our Discord server is also down there. Feel free to hop in there. We have several rooms dedicated to uh, live uh, event chat, uh, news stories, even just general gaming, sports. Come in, chill out, get to know us. Uh, always happy to have more members in there. And of course, we've got our podcast, which is on the various uh, podcast streaming channels. Uh, via Podbean again links to those are in the description but yeah like comment subscribe etc you get anything to say to the people before we let them go right I miss you Frozen he'll be back soon we just need to make, make do with DP again on Thursday it's just not the same <laughs> at least it is Watch his rampage to the point of taking notes. Good old rampage boy. Send for rampage boy, that's what I'm saying. He's a good egg, we like deep. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (sighs) So, uh, that's our show everybody. Thanks everyone for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Ronaldo's leaving and I'm not suing. (laughs) 